Now I'm much more cautious. I mean, I think there could be a substantial correction in the markets. I mean, over the long term, emerging markets will do very, very well. But these short term corrections can be quite dramatic. How big are we talking? 30, 40 percent is not unreasonable. Uh, I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying that we've got to be ready for that because we've had a long U.S. bull market and the U.S. being the largest market in the world will affect other markets, including emerging markets. What is it particularly that makes you nervous, apart from the fact that it's been a very long run and the cycle has been a very long cycle? Is it you think that the Fed might make a mistake at this point? Is it uh, political risks? Where, where, is the, where is the catalyst going to come from? A uh, catalyst, I believe, will come from uh, continuing increases in interest rates. Uh, the Fed is definitely moving in that direction, and when the Fed moves, everybody else has got to move in that direction. Of course, that'll be one uh, important catalyst. The other, and it, by the way, there's not necessarily a correlation between market movements and the interest rates, but it does have some convergence. The other thing I think will happen is uh, concerning political changes taking place anywhere in the world. Any event could be a trigger. But most importantly, we've seen this long bull market that needs a correction. The Dow staging a massive turnaround in this session today. We are down nearly 400 points, closed higher by about five. Wharton School professor Jeremy Siegel joins us now. Uh, professor, good to see you. Welcome. Happy to be here. So this has been an interesting time for the market. We basically, if, yeah. if you'd missed out, you know, Jan 1, you could still kind of get in where we were back then, but it, it has a whole different feel to it. Um, is this the kind of moment where Main Street does well, so to speak, and, and Wall Street just struggles for a while? What do you think? I think it's a, this is a good time to step back and see what's happened this year. Uh, mainly, the great market performance we had last year uh, was due, especially in the second half of the year, was due to anticipation of the corporate tax cut, which is the major economic program that the Trump administration got through. Now, the truth of the matter was analysts were a little bit slow on raising their estimates of earnings uh, yeah. in, in conjunction with that tax cut, mainly because they didn't know exactly how it would affect all the companies. But the market and, you know, that big rise in November, December, and even in January was this is going to be great. And it turned out to be great, but the market had, had discounted. So we have a lot of mm -hmm. certainly beating of, of uh, analyst estimates, but the market had anticipated. On the other hand, take a look at the Fed, take a look at tightening. Last December, the median expectation was for three Fed hikes. I think it's pretty well baked in now, unless something really bad happens, and that's not going to be good for stocks. There's going to be four rate hikes. So you have a rising rate environment. Stocks have met those higher expectations, and it's trying okay. to turn through to say, where do I, where do I go next? I mean, 17, so, 18 times earnings is certainly not uh, real expensive, but it's not dirt cheap either. Then let's spin the, you know, ahead forward another six months, and all of a sudden we're talking about the midterm elections. How important is that outcome to stocks right now when it looks like it could be a Democratic sweep? when it looks like impeachment might still be one of their main objectives, uh, when every day brings us a, a headline about Trump that might feed into those expectations one way or the other. Right. Uh, you know, I, I put the midterm elections as one of the big uncertainties. First, the interest rate uncertainty, and then secondly, the midterm elections uh, uh, coming up. Uh, you know, these expectations are that Democrats are going to uh, uh, take over the House. One should also say, by the way, that Trump's popularity has come back. Um, yeah. And even though it is, what, 10, 11 points underwater, that's actually the best it's been for a year. So there is some hope on the part of Republicans that, you know, with a good economy, people seeing the tax cut, maybe it'll inch further in that direction. But one thing is important. If the Republicans take the Senate, you know, there's not going to be a conviction. There's not going to be a reversal of these tax cuts. There's going to be no reversal of the Republican positions. They need the presidency, the Senate, and the House. That can't happen for another two and a half years. So some of those dangers are, are delayed. But, yeah, I mean, certainly that means that there's going to be no more. I mean, do we hear about infrastructure anymore? I was always a big doubter that yeah. that would ever come through. And, uh, you know, little trickles here or there. But really... The main part of the, of the Trump platform was the corporate tax cuts, to some extent the personal ones. That's done. Yep. All right. And we'll see now what uh, lies ahead. But Professor Siegel, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it.
Hi, my name is Rachel Frame. I'm a second year undergrad in the Tepper School of Business. Uh, speaking about interest rates, I had a question. In light of uh, the Fed raising rates and with equity prices at an all-time high, where do you foresee the bond and stock markets in the remainder of the year? Where, when? And for the remainder of 2018. Um, listen, it's, it's, it's tough right now because uh, historically uh, yields are fairly low. Um, so, it, it, but it's, it's, it's kind of complicated because I'm actually tonight I'm trying to figure out what the BOJ is doing. Because of the BOJ, either this meeting or next meeting may change their interest rate policy, which will affect our treasuries too, and will affect the stock, affect the stock market. So, I, I think, as far as the stock market is concerned, I think they're okay. I don't think it's great. I think we might have reached the highs for the year, um, and it really has to do with interest rates. I'm not sure. We're right on the cusp of breaking out on interest rates at, at this level, th around three percent. I think they closed at two point nine eight percent on the ten year. Actually, no, because I just looked. But um, um, but if they do, if they do, people, a lot of people don't think they're going to break higher. Most people are saying they'll only go to three and a quarter. And I think if they only go to three and a quarter through the rest of the year, the market, stock market will be up. But too many people are saying that. You know what I'm saying? So when so many people say that, I become wary that it's not going to hold. So and if they don't hold, then stocks may have a problem. So. And so. Um well, I can't help but ask, you see, well, you've made some, some aspects analogous to the current position. Now, it's obviously not that bad. The interest, the, the, the return, the dividend versus interest rate isn't, isn't where it was. You see a lot of excesses in the current market? I would say that we have, uh, well, I think right now, when you look at kind of any asset price, you, you have to be thinking that this is uh, a highly dubious sustainable price. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Um, one, first and foremost, I don't think monetary policy, the way it's currently conducted, is sustainable over time. We have, if you think about just history, history is the normal real 10-year rates, 200 basis points, and right now we're probably minus 30 or 40. The normal real short-term rates 100 to 120 basis points, and we're probably negative 40 right now. So, uh, so clearly, interest rate policy is crazy. Like if you had just parachuted in and said we have a 3.8% unemployment, 2.8% CPI, water rates, you'd just four and a half five. or five or something like that. So you know rates ultimately are not sustainable because ultimately, much like the late 60s, we had Operation Twist in the 50s and 60s where we manipulated interest rates and had low real rates. And then everyone kind of in the 60s got used to zero rates, zero real rates, and that set us up for the 70s. And so I think we're doing the same thing again. So I don't think monetary policy is sustainable, and clearly fiscal policy. Are you kidding me? We're we're going to be we're going to be four this year. Add a half a percent every year for the next five or six years. We'll be at seven in three years. Uh, that's not sustainable. So you look at prices of stocks, real estate, anything. You know, in the long run, that we have to get back to some type. We're going to have to mean revert back to a normal real rate of interest with a normal term premium that's existed for 250 years. Uh, we're going to have to get back to that. We're going to have to get back to a sustainable fiscal policy. And that probably means uh, price of assets go down in the very long run. Now, the short run, uh, you know, it's just... Lighter fluid on a fire. I was going to say jacked up, ready yes. to go. Flare, flare, that's flare. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah it's... Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of amazing, but it's, uh, you know, pouring lighter fluid on, a, on an already lit fire. Two, two problems with that. One is it flares, and the other problem is you don't have the lighter fluid left for when you need it. So it'll be... So if just imagine uh, the next recession comes. What do you do? Oh, my God. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. They're going to... This will be... Where are you going to be when that happens? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, hopefully I'll have been really short. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the next recession's really frightening because we don't have any stabilizers. Uh, we'll have monetary policy, which will exhaust very quickly, but we don't have any fiscal st stabilizers. In 2000, the last time we were at 3.8% unemployment, we had a 2.5% budget surplus. Yeah. 
I guess the hope is uh, from the uh, from the guys who are putting out the policy is that the uh, that the rate of growth grows to a point where it just solves the problem. It doesn't it seems like a stretch, but that's the uh, that's the claim. <laughs> You're laughing. I just have I have to You're say it. I have to I have to say it for equal. Uh, <laughs> you could have said that to me when Reagan was president. Yeah, 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 yeah. But okay.